hello, everyone. My name is Mary, and I am one of the instructors here at PA CareerLink. And today we're going to talk about um, Big Interview, how to sign in, and how to use the system. So let's go ahead and share our screen here. So this is what our um, the PA CareerLink website looks like. And what you would have to do is go ahead and sign in. So remember your Keystone ID. and your password. Once you hit sign in and register, you'll be in your page. And you want to go to the career service menu up here in the corner, and then scroll down here to interview training. Once you're in interview training, um, it's going to take you to this website here, um, telling you that you're about to leave our page, but this is our big interview. And so you can watch the big interview sample software here. And why don't we go ahead and do that? Are you nervous about your next interview? It can be really tough to sell yourself and stand out especially with so many tough questions to answer. That's why we developed Big Interview, a proven system for better interview prep. Big Interview was developed by top interview expert Pamela Skillings. She's helped thousands of clients ace their interviews and land their dream jobs. Now you can learn proven and tested ways to truly impress hiring managers. Pamela will teach you how to be an amazing candidate and coach you through exercises that have helped thousands of her clients. She'll help you anticipate tough questions, prepare your sales pitch, and show up confident and ready. And most importantly, Coach Pam will guide you through practicing with Big Interview's cutting-edge mock interview tool. Don't waste your next career opportunity. It's hard enough to get an interview. Try the Big Interview system today, and you'll be ready to land your dream job. Okay. So that's just the preview before we enter. So we're going to come over here and we're going to hit the enter. And this is the disclaimer that comes up. You can read the disclaimer, but in order to use the um, big interview tool, you're going to need to hit OK. And what it does is it brings up your dashboard. And on your dashboard, you can look for new job search lessons and they are available so you can check your curriculum. And you can do a um, start a new lesson here on your learning track or you can start with your master track. Down here, you're going to see the tell me about yourself question, behavioral interview questions, and the new graduate playbook if you're graduating from high school or college. Um, and then entry level practice. You'll be able to um, build your answer here, but why don't we go ahead and um, go in here to one of the lesson plans. So it's time to practice. Let's see how you apply what you've learned so far. So we can go here and hit types of interviews. Let's review the different types of interviews you should be prepared for. In terms of your answers, you should prepare the same way for a phone interview versus an in-person interview versus a Skype interview. However, some formats come with particular challenges, and we want you to be able to customize your approach for different situations. So let's start with the phone interview. Phone interviews are very common, especially as the first interview with a recruiter or HR person. A lot of my interview coaching clients prefer phone interviews 
because they feel they're less intimidating than a face-to-face -face meeting. And in a lot of ways, they are. First of all, you don't have to worry about how you look. You don't have to worry about wardrobe or body language or eye contact. You can also have your notes nearby for reference. For many, that really helps with nerves. However, there are also special challenges in a phone interview. It's much harder to make a strong impression in a phone interview for a couple of reasons. One is that it's harder to connect and build rapport without nonverbal cues. Harder to feel like you're getting to know someone when you can't look into their eyes or smile or lean forward to show your interest. Especially if you're someone who's really good in the room, as they say. It's much more difficult to convey charisma or magnetism with only your voice. It's part of the reason that people are much more likely to remember you if they've met you in person. This is why salespeople always want to get the in-person meeting. In the phone interview, all you have is your voice and your words. So you really have to make sure that that voice and those words are on point. You may also want to make an extra effort to bring positive energy out in what you say and how you say it. It's also harder to read your interviewer during a phone interview. You won't be able to see how he or she is responding to what you say. I think this is why candidates tend to talk way too much in phone interviews. They ramble on, subconsciously waiting for a sign that the interviewer is satisfied. You'll do better if you get comfortable with moments of silence. You hear the silence as, oh my gosh, she hates my answer, I better keep talking and salvage this, when the silence really means she's checking her phone or signaling to her coworker about lunch. Don't rush to keep talking and fill the quiet. If the interviewer wants more or has a follow-up question, he'll let you know. You'll sound much more confident if you're concise and stay on point. In terms of questions, phone interviews tend to cover topics similar to those covered in in-person interviews. If it's a phone screen interview, the questions are more likely to be basic resume review questions, though some may include tougher fit questions or technical questions as well. You never want to blow off preparation for a phone interview, assuming it will be easier than an in-person meeting. Go in prepared for any type of question that could come up. The rest of the lessons in this curriculum will help you with that part. Moving on to the one-on-one -on -one in-person interview. Of course, the one-on-one -on -one in-person interview is the classic format. Probably the majority of job interviews in your life are going to fall under this category. In fact, you may get six of them in a row on any given interview day. This type of interview usually lasts from 20 to 45 minutes. After the introductions and small talk, the majority of the interview is the interviewer asking questions and you answering them. The same questions come up time and time again. We've got lessons and sample answers for all of these commonly asked questions. You also want to be ready for a curveball or two. But most interviews are pretty predictable. They want to find out if you can do the job and if they can see themselves working with you. After you finish answering their questions, you'll get a chance to ask them questions of your own. And then there's typically some sort of wrap up and discussion of next steps. It sounds pretty straightforward, and it is in many ways, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Preparation is what sets apart the candidates who get hired. Some of my coaching clients have really struggled with the in-person format. They were passing the phone interviews with flying colors and then getting rejected after the in-person meeting. In person, your nonverbal communications play a much bigger role. And it's easy to fall back on bad habits when you're nervous and feel on display, like talking fast, slouching, ums and uhs. Practice is a key to get comfortable with both your talking points and the delivery of those talking points. Next, let's talk about the video interview. Companies are increasingly using video interviews, whether Skype or some other form of video conferencing or recording. As the technology has become more reliable and more individuals have gained access to webcams and video conferencing tools, more companies see the value of using video interview tools to screen candidates more effectively. They offer the convenience of a phone interview with the bonus of the visual element. If you have a video interview coming up, you'll want to prepare in much the same way that you would prepare for an in-person interview. However, if the video format is relatively new for you, you will also want to get comfortable with being on camera and with the technical components. You absolutely want to prepare your environment and give some thought to backdrop, lighting, background noise, camera angle. Do a webcam test and adjust your camera or powder your nose accordingly. In fact, it's a great idea to do a test interview, either using Big Interview or with someone you can trust to give you candid feedback. This will help you get a realistic sense of how you're coming across on video. Does your eye contact look natural? Should you adjust the height of your laptop to avoid the ever unflattering upward angle. A dress rehearsal will help you avoid problems on interview day. Moving right along to the panel interview. A panel interview just means you're meeting with more than one person at the same time, typically two to four people. 
Sometimes, particularly in a government or academic environment, you might have a larger panel, especially for more senior level roles. A panel interview may sound terrifying, but it's actually not that bad. Here are some tips to help you embrace the panel interview. First, find out as much as you can about the specific format and the panel members in advance. Try to find out how many people are going to be there. Do they represent different departments or different areas of expertise that relate to the job you're interviewing for? How do the different panel members interact with the role you're interviewing for? If you know what you're walking into, it's going to make you less nervous. Next, and this is probably the most important thing, you need to connect with everyone. This is what's most different compared to the one-on-one -on -one interview. When you've got three people sitting across from you, you have to make sure that you include everyone in your answers, that you build rapport with each individual. You can do this by alternating eye contact and focus. You want to make sure that every person on the panel walks out of that interview thinking, you're a great fit. Finally, the last interview format that we're going to cover is the group interview. A group interview is when a company gathers a group of applicants and basically interviews all of them simultaneously. Sometimes this is a full day experience and includes a group project. It could also include some mingling activities, maybe some separate one-on-one -on -one interviews. Group interviews can take many different forms. The good thing is that most companies will provide you with an agenda and some instructions in advance. For large, well-known companies and programs, you can often find details online, posted by those who've been through the process in the past. Why would a company choose a group interview format? It's usually when they're hiring for multiple openings in a structured program, like an internship program, or a management rotation program, or a new class of analysts or sales reps. A group format allows the hiring managers to observe candidates interacting with each other and get a better sense of how they approach tasks. So you have to go into the group interview remembering that you're going to be observed. What role do you play in a group? Do you step up with ideas? Do you respect other people's perspectives? Are you comfortable jumping into a new group and a new environment? For the group activities, you want to try to focus on being yourself, but yourself at your best. And there you have it. Now you know about all of the common interview formats and how to do well in any interview scenario. Okay. So that is just one of the many lessons that are on Big Interview. Um, another helpful thing that I do like um, about the um, Big Interview tool is that you can um, do interview roulette. And so you would just go ahead and click here. And it is going to ask you a question, okay? So let's go ahead and hit play. How would things be different? And in order to answer this question and record yourself, you would hit start recording and answer the question. When you're ready to move on, then you would go ahead and hit next question. All right. Um, the nice thing about that is it does give you insight into what the interviewer is seeing when they are interviewing you. Um, I tend to have a lot of different habits. I talk with my hands a lot, and that may be distracting to an interviewer. So this, um, one, only helps you practice your answer, but two, when you watch it back, it gives you insight into what somebody else sees when they're interviewing you. Um, you keep this for yourself. It doesn't go anywhere. Nobody sees it unless you share the link out to maybe a career navigator or a caseworker to kind of get some you know, more interview practice talking point. And there you have it. That is big interview in a nutshell. Um, if you're looking for more interview practice, remember that we have um, here at the Lancaster office, uh, mock interviews being done every single Friday. In order to sign up for one, you would go to your calendar of events, go to a Friday, um, Look for the mock interviews, take a time slot, and register for it. And then somebody here will do your interview and then give you immediate feedback in the ways that you could improve. Please remember that interviewing is a skill, and one of the ways to combat the nerves that you have is to brush up on those skills. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please stop into PA Career Link if you have more questions.